this week on the show, we have former Victoria's Secret model, Jasmine Tux. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that failure is a pivotal moment for growth. The reality is we don't learn the most when things are perfect and going smoothly in our lives, but rather when we are faced with obstacles and forced to dig deep to get through life's challenges. When we are faced with challenging situations, we have two options, to give up or to get up, be strong and not quit. When we begin to understand that failure is a pivotal moment for growth, we begin to realize that failure will teach us more than success ever will and that we can't appreciate success unless we know what failure feels like. Successful people use failure to grow, become wiser, and get better. The next time you find yourself faced with an obstacle, use this pivotal moment to shift your mindset from victim to victor and remind yourself you got this. As Confucius quotes, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but rising every time we fail. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. And what made you want to audition for Victoria's Secret? And tell us about the audition. What was running through your head and when you found out that you got picked? Because I'm sure that was an epic moment. Yeah, I mean, again, like ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to do Victoria's Secret. So I knew that when I got the opportunity to do the casting, that it was definitely something I wanted to do. I actually, for the show, auditioned about two times and the third time I ended up getting it um, and it was really exciting it was definitely a big moment in my career if I didn't do Victoria's Secret or be one of the angels for most of my career I think I wouldn't be where I am today so I owe them a lot and it was a really nice family to work with um, over the years and I made so many friends which I'm still super close with. Wardrobe provided by H&M Next up on the show, we have American model and former Victoria's Secret angel, Jasmine Tux. Jasmine, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. I am very excited to talk to you. You're one of my favorite models. Uh, but before we get into all of your success, let's talk about how you started. I know that your mom was a celebrity uh, stylist and that you were discovered in one of her showrooms. So tell us about that pivotal moment. Yeah, so I um, grew up with my mom as a celebrity stylist and she would always take me to photo shoots with her and to showrooms and I was always like super interested to be a model at a young age, which I feel like is very rare because most people don't even know what modeling is, but it was something that I really dreamed of doing. And when I went to one of the showrooms, um, this woman, uh, said to me, you have to go meet with this agency in New York. So I went there and I met with the agency and they immediately were like, I would love for you to move to New York. And so I waited about a year until I finished school and I moved to New York and then that's how it started. Wow. I mean, that's everyone's dream, right? Is to be discovered. <laughs> so that's amazing that that was your goal to be a model. And I mean, it happened for you. Um, you've been in campaigns like uh, for DKNY, Vogue Italia. So let's talk about what's your most memorable campaign to date and why? Um, I would probably say all of them, honestly. <laughs> I think I show up to work every day as if it's my first day and I really enjoy it. Um, but one that really stood out to me is definitely for the Victoria's Secret fantasy bra as um, you know Victoria's Secret was my dream as a little girl and to get the chance to wear the fantasy bra for the years that I was there was really really exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and what made you want to audition for Victoria's Secret and tell us about the audition what was running through your head and when you found out that you got picked because I'm sure that was an uh, epic moment. Yeah, I mean, again, like ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to do Victoria's Secret. So I knew that when I got the opportunity to do the casting, that it was definitely something I wanted to do. I actually, for the show, auditioned about two times and the third time I ended up getting it. Um, and it was really exciting. It was definitely a big moment in my career. If I 
didn't do Victoria's Secret or be one of the angels for most of my career, I think I wouldn't be where I am today. So I owe them a lot. And it was a really nice family to work with um, over the years. And I made so many friends, which I'm still super close with. Yeah, and I can imagine the mental preparation and physical preparation for any fashion show, especially Victoria's Secret. So, so let's tell us how you prepared uh, personally for it. Yeah, so I have always been an athlete growing up. I played volleyball, softball, I did gymnastics for like 15 years. And so having a routine is something that comes very natural to me. So when it comes time to training for a show, it was never something that I really had to like amp up my workouts for because I like to be in, you know, my best shape that I can always be at every moment so I don't have to get ready for something. <laughs> um, so I always like really try to stay super strong and fit year round. And um, I do a lot of weight training and Pilates and I just really like to mix up my workouts, but I also really, really actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I find that, you know, you're always very composed and confident. What do you think the secret to your, your fearless attitude is? <laughs> hmm. I mean, I honestly don't know. <laughs> People always ask me, like, how do you stay so calm? Yeah. Why are you always so positive? But I think, you know, I've always had it instilled in my mind that you really can't control anything and you kind of just have to go with the flow, keep pushing and striving to be your best self and um, don't let any negativity get to you. Whenever I hear negativity around me or someone's in a bad mood, I literally will try to leave the room so that the energy doesn't come around me and, you know, take over my mindset because I wake up every day, um, you know, just very grateful for where I am in my life. and for the people around me. And I think that really helps to just like go with the flow and, you know, just remember that you can't control anything. I think that's an important one, right? Is, is reminding yourself that you can control everything because that's one of the biggest stress factors is always trying to control things, right? So yeah. I, I like that. I, that's, that's one easy way to be more calm, I think. And do you have any personal development um, uh, routines that you personally follow? Um, honestly, I think working out is one of the things that really helps me. I find that when I slow down on my workouts and I'm not keeping up with them, it can really affect um, your mental sort of like headspace. So to stay, you know, really happy and positive and always uplifted, working out, even if it's just for 10 minutes going on a hike, really, really has always helped me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Physical fitness definitely helps. And you know, one of the questions most of our viewers have been asking is, what is it like to walk a Victoria's Secret fashion show? Um, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's hard to describe because it's not really like anything else. You know, I've done so many different fashion shows um, with high fashion brands, and those shows are a lot more stiff, and it's about the clothes. It's not about the girl at all. Mm -hmm. So when you walk the Victoria's Secret fashion show, it's more so all about you and all about your personality. And you're in a room filled with so many women that have also been dreaming of walking this catwalk. So every year it got more and more special. And as my years went on, I, um, I started to get less and less nervous because you were, you're more and more comfortable. You know exactly what to expect. and it was just always really fun to then welcome the new girls coming in and give them tips and tricks. And you get this crazy adrenaline rush when you get on the runway and then it feels like it literally lasts about two seconds yeah. and you're off and you just want to do it again, which when the Victoria's Secret show was happening, you did get to do it again because there was always two tapings. Oh, very nice. And what was it like working with the other girls? And what did you, what's something you learned about yourself during that process? It was amazing working with the other girls. I mean, I see Josephine every day. <laughs> well, not just because we have a brand together, but we hang out all the time. I talk to Laís all the time, Elsa, Romy, like we're all very close. So it was so fun. Never felt like a work day going to the studio. It was always just like, oh, just going to hang out with my friends and take some photos. So that was always like a really big blessing. And I think something that I learned from all of the girls would be 
that we're all unique and individual in our own way and you know to never compare ourselves to each other i think is super important and i think that's why we've all been able to have such a long lasting friendship because we did never compare ourselves to each other you know you look at models from the 90s and you hear these crazy stories of them not getting along and stuff but i feel like there was just a little bit more i guess competition mindset back then and with us it was all about oh this girl you know is starting a brand or this girl is on the cover of the catalog this year like let's celebrate it and just like praise her yeah very nice and you know as well as being a supermodel, you also are a successful businesswoman. I know you started Joja, so tell us about your brand. Yeah, so Joja was sort of developed or, you know, started in 2016, actually. We started by building a community on Instagram where Josephine and I would just post our daily workouts. And this was, again, back when Victoria's Secret was at its peak. So all of the girls around the world that were Victoria's Secret fans were really interested in what we do to stay fit, what we're eating, all those kinds of lifestyle things. So we posted our workouts and we weren't really thinking anything of it like, you know, oh, this is going to turn into a brand or anything. It was literally just a kind of like a vlog, a blog space for us to just document our workouts. So years go by and girls started asking us what are you guys wearing and where do you get your workout clothes and we would always answer of course because we love to support other brands but it made us think why don't we start our own clothing brand if people are asking what we're wearing they must like it and yeah. we come from a background of fashion so we have a lot of creative ideas and we've saved so many workout clothes over the years because we've also shot with so many workout brands that we have this pile downstairs in my gym and it's like all the pants we love and all the pants we don't love and they're you know we leave little sticky notes about why we love these pants and then once we started creating our first line we would take little notes from each thing and put it together and that's sort of like how our designs came about and everything very nice and you know with any entrepreneurial journey there's challenges i always like to talk about challenges because i feel that it inspires our viewers to see that you know success is not just an easy road there are always turns so so let's talk about what are some challenges that you faced when bringing joja to the market and how did you get through it i think some challenges that we have even still today is that we wanted to do it all on our own yeah, and yeah. you know there's so many celebrities and people out there who are approached by brands and we have also been in the past and they're basically like we just want to throw your name on something but you only get 20 percent of the company mm -hmm. and that's not something we wanted to do since we have been growing georgia since 2016 we hold it really close to our hearts so we literally have done everything on our own we go down to the factory two three times a week we answer customer service emails we package all the gifting so we're very hands-on and that's something that i definitely didn't expect you know all of the ups and downs that happen with the factories and everything you just have to constantly be ready to pivot and you know come up with new solutions to everything but it's really fun and it's really fulfilling i think that we've done it on our own because it's really special to us yeah absolutely i think that's the challenge most entrepreneurs have right is they want to do everything themselves and then they realize they can't you you can't take on everything sometimes you just have to you know tell people you need help and and get the right help right so i, I, exactly. like, that, <laughs> I like that you said that and what kind of feedback have you been getting from your fans about your brands because it's it's been uh it's really blown up <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of really good feedback and I feel so grateful that, you know, we have the platforms that we do because we do know that we are, you know, very, I guess you could say like privileged in that way to have sort of a launch pad to, you know, catapult a brand into the world. And we've had amazing feedback. Everyone really loves our designs. They're very unique. Um, and you know, we really pay attention to the female body when we're designing our clothes, which I feel like a lot of activewear brands don't really do that. They're just like, let's make a tight pant that, you know, a girl can go running in. But when Josephine and I design, 
we look at you know where the hips sit on a woman and where the butt you know the best way to place the stitching so that the butt is enhanced and we, we look at all these little things so we get a lot of feedback specifically girls being like oh my gosh i just wore my joja outfit and like everyone was like staring at me and saying how good i look and my boyfriend like loves this outfit my girlfriends are so obsessed so that's been really really exciting for us and i think every collection that we make i think we're now on our fourth collection coming up in november um they get better and better because we obviously learn a little bit more about who our customer is and really what she's looking for yeah and let's talk about the sizing as well because you know i know even victoria's secret has changed their sizing to fit all women so let's talk about the sizing for joja and how it fits all women yeah so sizing was something that was really important to us you know like i said we've worked with so many other brands in the past and that was never the case mm -hmm. it was always geared towards smaller sizes. So, you know, Josephine and I, when we decided to create our brand, it was not even a question that we had to make, you know, a size range that could cater to everyone because fitness and wellness is not just for one type of body. And it was really, really important to us to make sure that everyone felt comfortable in our clothes. And, you know, even all of our campaigns, we make sure to feature different body types. We make sure to feature different ethnicities so that everyone can feel like they can connect with Joja at some point. And it's, yeah, I, I wouldn't start a brand if it couldn't include everybody. Yeah, and I like that. I can tell you're really passionate about it. You're, you're lighting up when you're talking about it. And it, it's great because when you're passionate about something, that's when a company is successful is because that translates to, you know, their work. So I love that you're passionate about it. And, you know, Jasmine, there are so many people that look up to you and to you as an inspiration. So I want to ask you for someone watching this that's, you know, going through a hard time, not seeing their dreams manifest or just maybe not feeling good. What would you say to inspire and uplift them? Oh my gosh. I think I would say to just keep going. You know, I think back to my career and I can I not compare it, but I see the way careers are being formed now, which is very quickly. And that has a lot to do with social media. And, you know, when I think back to my career and when I started, it took me a few years to even I think get my first job like to get my first campaign it was actually for Abercrombie and Fitch and I remember just being in New York going to so many castings and just being told no majority of the time and I would never get down on myself and I would keep pushing and striving until I got to where I wanted to be and I could imagine that it's very easy if you are you know told no so many times to really listen to that and be like oh i'm not good enough or um you know they don't want me but that's not true i firmly believe that everything happens for a reason and that everyone has a moment in time that's meant for them and if it's not now then it could be in the future but if you are passionate about something like keep going and keep striving for that goal because one day your time will come and um, that's sort of how i approach everything in my life um, and it's always worked out because I'm always very passionate about what I love. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that because I think that's so important. That's why I created my platform was to show success stories and also talk about their journey because people see social media and they see a perfect life. But there's a lot of challenges and a lot of no's that people faced before getting to where they are. So I like that you share that because I think that will inspire a lot of people to not take no for an answer and keep going. So yeah. thank you. If you're if someone's telling no, then I always say you're talking to the wrong person. I'm like, you got to figure it out some way. You will get to where you want to be. Just keep going. <laughs> exactly. I always say no means next opportunity. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta move on. But Jasmine, what are you currently working on? What else is uh, in store for you? Oh goodness. Honestly, Joja takes a lot of my time. Literally, we were in meetings yesterday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So <laughs> there's not really time to do anything else. Um, so yeah, we're really focusing on Joja a lot in the upcoming 2023 um, year. And we're really excited for the future because we have a lot of things brewing, not only in active wear, but in other spaces that I can't talk about, but super excited about it and people know soon.
Jasmine, thank you so much for being on the show today and congratulations on all your success and uh, Joja as well. Um, it's really nice to see, so continue the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Yeah.